the Holy Spirit. We ask that you would join us now as we worship God on this resurrection day. Come on, y'all. praise because we felt that today was special. Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Amen. And so this is the day that, that the Lord has made. made. We're Lord. going to rejoice Lord. and be and glad in it. Amen? This is the day we're going to be a blessing to, to God and to others. This is the day we're going to 
be victorious over anything that the world or the devil brings our way. This is the day we're going to be fruitful and effective in everything that we put our hands to do. This is the day we will have peace that the world didn't give us and the world can't take it away. This is the day we're going to be healthy from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And finally, this is the day we're going to let go and let God have his way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we affirm. That's what we believe. And we pray. I know a lot of you all uh, that are watching right now know that those affirmations. And I, believe, I just truly believe that you joined us just a little while ago. As we did it, so did you. And the ones that don't know, those are scriptures that we applied in our affirmation science. So everything you heard just a little while ago came from the scripture. Amen? Amen. So let's get into the word of God on this resurrection day. Uh, we are excited. And uh, I had a message that I wanted to bring forth. And God says, no. And Sister Yvonne even reminded me, says, oh, no, the devil would love for you to continue on with your agenda and not give God his day on Resurrection Sunday. So we're going to look at uh, John, the gospel according to John, chapter 20. And we're going to pick up in verses 11 and we'll read through verse 18. Uh, I'll be reading out of the New King James Version. And that's the gospel according to John, chapter 20. Verses 11 through 18. When you get there, just catch up with me if you're not there. It reads like this. But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lain, or had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Mm. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Mm. Jesus said to her, Mary. Hallelujah. She turned around and said to him, Rabboni, or Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and to your God. Verse 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. The subject for this day is... This resurrection day belongs to Jesus and us. Ah, let me say that again. This resurrection day belongs to Jesus and us. Amen? Amen. We know that God sent his only begotten son to do what? To save all those who believeth in him. And that who believeth in him, they will not perish, but they will have everlasting life. God sent Jesus for us. God, in the song we sang, did it just for me. So we are connected forever with the plan and the purpose and the fulfillment of God and bringing Jesus into the world for us. This resurrection day, it's not like no other day of the year. Amen? And one of the things that we want to look at is look at what Jesus did. His life's work. He came. He did miracles. He showed us the image 
of what God the Father looks like. And then he added and showed us how much love God the Father and Jesus has for his creation. This was all for God's glory and also for God to fulfill his plan. So when Jesus came and died and paid the price for our sins to fulfill the plan of God, this was already pre, uh, prophesied in the ages past. All the years past when the prophets was talking about the Messiah coming. He came. And when he came, he came and he fulfilled the requirements that God had for payment for sins. The wages of sins is death. Something or someone had to die. But what I want you to know is that when Jesus came and fulfilled this promise that he had for all those, the covenant that he had for the people of God who would believe in him, there was a um, adversarial component to this problem. Satan. Now you say, why are you bringing him up? Because remember, the message is uh, uh, this resurrection day belongs to Christ, to Jesus, and to us. So what was it that Satan was planning and trying to do in this whole uh, 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 process and plan of God. Well, he wanted to, how can I put it, disrupt the plan of God by trying to do the same thing he did to all humanity. And that is, I'm here, I'm talking about the adversary, I'm here to cause Jesus to fall. I'm here to cause Jesus to not operate by faith. I'm here to cause Jesus to give up on the plan of God. Does that sound like something that we experience ourselves? Because you know how it is. When we're looking to God for the fulfillment of our request to come forth, we have to fight through the attack the attack of the adversary to cause us to maybe give up on our faith or to cause us to maybe give up on our hope in God and maybe even to uh, doubt that God is going to do what God can do. And so think about this. Jesus comes, Satan comes to him in the wilderness and he said to him, if you are the son of God, change the stone into bread. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. He's trying to sow doubt into Jesus. He's thinking Jesus is like any other human. <laughs> Amen? Amen? He's of the flesh. Amen? Amen? Satan looks at it. Hey, he's a man just like anybody else. And everybody else, I cause to stumble. So surely I, got, I can do this with Jesus. Amen? Amen? One of the things that he did, though, is in trying to get Jesus to doubt, it didn't work. He even, look, he even showed him uh, like he did with Adam and Eve, and they said they saw that the tree uh, was pleasant to the eyes, good for food and good to make one wise. He did the same thing in the wilderness with Jesus. He says, look, all of this is mine to give to whomever I wish to. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth. Why? Because he thought Jesus, like mankind, would look and be tempted to give in to what he seen. But how many know it didn't work? So Satan had to continue on in a strategic uh, plan to try to cause Christ to fall. Now remember the message is, this resurrection day belongs to Jesus, not to Satan. But Satan is involved. And he's trying to disrupt the plan of God. So it didn't work in the wilderness. Let me get somebody I can work through to cause him to stumble. Let me get Judas to betray him. Let me get G uh, uh, Peter to deny him. Let me get the, the disciples to forsake him when it got hard and he's now going to be crucified. Satan's thinking, oh, I got him now. God sent his best, 
his son, but he's a man. And I can get to him just like I do anybody else. And Satan's thinking, on the cross, I got him. Jesus even said what? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Satan's got to be thinking, oh, I got him now. And when he dies, when Jesus dies, you know in the spiritual realm, just use your spiritual thinking and just look at what is probably going on. Jesus is dead. He's died. He's buried. He's in a tomb. What do you think Satan's doing right now? I got him, he's thinking. I got him. I got him just like every other man. But how many know that three days pass, and on the third day, what happens? God stepped in. Hallelujah. Come on now. God steps in, and then God begins to show himself, look, I can do things that you've never seen before. Look, God steps in, raises Jesus from the dead. When God the Father raises Jesus from the dead, the way Jesus went down is not the way he came up. Come on now. See, I got to stand up just for a moment. Because God did something that Satan had no idea he could do. The power of God was able to raise a dead person that had been dead for three years. And I'm not talking about somebody that, like, like Lazarus, who, who Jesus raised from the dead, he never ascended into heaven. That was not a resurrection. That was a bringing back to life. Amen? There's a difference. Resurrection is not only coming up out of the grave, but it means, the word term means to be caught up. Amen? Amen. So Jesus said, and, and we saw in uh, John chapter 20, Mary... Verse 17, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But here's what I want you to see. One of the things that Jesus, that God did by raising Jesus from the dead, he gave Jesus a whole new look. He gave Jesus a whole nother authority. He gave Jesus the power. Look, he says, all power has been given unto me now, Jesus says. In heaven and in the earth. Amen? Jesus now is raised in power. And he's not only raised in power, but he's raised now to not to be submitted or subjected to, to worldly authorities. Now worldly authorities have to be subjected to him. Hallelujah. Amen. See, you say, well, aren't we supposed to, you know, the Bible says that we're supposed to subject ourselves to uh, authorities. Well, Jesus did. Remember? That's how he got crucified. He did no sin. He did no wrong. But he submitted to the authorities of the world. That's before he died. That's before he took over the keys of, you know, of the kingdom of heaven and hell. Amen? That's when he freed all those who were bound and, and left in uh, uh, Sheol, waiting also for deliverance. And one of the things that he did, we're going to look at. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, we who believe in God are raised right with him. Amen? Amen. See, we're forever connected. This resurrection that took place belongs to Jesus, but it also belongs to us. Because the whole purpose of God's plan was to save us so that we will always be connected to God. Amen? Amen. Look at, uh, turn with me if you would to 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at uh, chapter 15. And we're going to pick up in verses 3 through 8. And it says here, For I delivered, this is the Apostle Paul, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Y'all got to get that. According mm -hmm. to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This scripture that we are saved by is because God said it. And God has the power to give us illumination, revelation, and understanding that his word is true. Let me keep reading. And he was seen by Cephas, which is Peter, then by the twelve. 
And after that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. This is after he gets up out of the grave. God began to show Jesus. Jesus just began to show himself like, you all need to know that I am who I am. Amen? Amen. I am the one that has died for your sins. I am the one that was on the cross, that was buried, but I am now alive. Mm -hmm. And he goes on, he says, uh, uh, seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles, in verse 8. Then last of all, Paul said, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. Paul never walked with Jesus like the disciples did. That's why he says, I, I, was, he was, I was seeing, Jesus showed himself to me when I wasn't a part of the time when he was living. Jesus was in heaven, but he then shown himself to Paul as one still that is uh, called, but one out of due season. And so, what am I saying here? One of the things that Jesus or God did by raising Jesus uh, uh, on that third day is he allowed everybody to see him. Why? To prove that Jesus is real. To prove that the resurrection is true. And that everybody can bear witness. Look, not only did he show himself to the apostles, not only did he show himself to uh, 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 the, the, the two guys on the road to Emmaus, you know, he showed himself to 500 people at one time. So everybody is recording, or Paul is recording what the Holy Spirit gave him to write about the witnesses that were able to say, Jesus is real. This resurrection did occur. And my brothers and sisters, this is why I am so excited, because you too are witnesses of what God has done in your life. No, you might not have walked with him, but neither did Paul. Amen? So if Paul can testify because he had an experience with the Lord, how many of you have had experiences with the Lord? Can you give and bear witness to somebody else that God is real, that the resurrection did happen? And why? Because my faith kicks in and I'm able to share with whosoever will my experience with God. And I'm sure you can too. And if you haven't, then that means that there, you're in line right now listening to this message to get your or give your life to Christ so that you can have an experience. I pray that there's somebody there right now that is looking at this YouTube and they're hearing me speak these words and said, I've never had an experience with Christ. I, I hear what you're saying. But I want you to know that Jesus says, I stand. The door is open. Anybody who comes to me and opens that door, I will come into you. I will dine with you, you will dine with me, and we will sup one with another. But you have to open the door of your heart. He says, but I stand ready. I'm knocking at the door. So this resurrection day is the foundation for everything we believe. We're going to go there in a minute, but let me just share number two. The first thing is, the resurrection was to prove that God did raise Jesus from the dead. This is the foundation of our faith as Christians. You can talk about baptisms, you can talk about other things, but if there's no resurrection, it's all in vain, which we're going to look at a little later. Amen? But we can testify that there, this, this is true because of the experiences that each one of us have had. And we need to hold on to those experiences. Because every experience that you have with the Lord builds your faith for even the times that we're living in right now. See, the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? That's what his, his MO is to steal your joy, to kill your faith, and destroy your hope. That's what the devil wants to do. We have joy. We have peace that the world didn't get. So the girl world can't take it away. We have a uh, faith that God has made a sure, or uh, placed us in a sure foundation to where we just believe him for anything. We trust him with all our hearts. And we have hope that will never disappoint. 
because of the experiences that you and I, I pray, have with the Lord. But number two is this. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he was not the same. He was transformed. He took on a heavenly body. Somebody needs to say amen because amen. the body that you have when you die is not the same body that you will have when you get up. Turn with me if you would. We're going to look at a few scriptures. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 right here, look at verses uh, uh, 39 through 44. It says, all flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another flesh of another of fish, and another of birds, right? Listen to this. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is, one, is another. Verse 41. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. Verse 42. So also, this is key, is the resurrection of the dead. Amen? Amen. The body is sown in corruption, but yet it is raised in incorruption. Listen. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Y'all y'all see where we're going? Y'all see that when we are raised with Christ, that we're not going to be the same, and neither was he. Let's keep going. Amen? Mm -hmm. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 48 and 49. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. Y'all hear me? Amen. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, hallelujah, we shall also uh, 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 bear the image of the heavenly man. Come on now. Listen, this resurrection belongs to Jesus and us. Because guess what? Who are born again, we now take on the image and the likeness of Christ. So regardless of whether when Jesus comes back and we get caught up, because those who remain and are alive will be caught up together to meet him in the air, we will be transformed. Or whether you die, or not you, but whether our loved ones have already passed away in the Lord, when they are raised up, they will take on a heavenly body. Now you say, well, what does that look like? Well, turn with me to Mark. Turn with me to Mark, and we're going to pick up in verse 6, I mean, chapter 16. And let's look at verse 9 through 12. Mark chapter 16, verse 9 through 12. It says, now when he rose early, Jesus, on the first day of the week, he appeared to, or appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven demons. Because, you know, there's a bunch of Marys up in here, right? And then he says, She went and told those who had been with them. She went and told those who had been with them, and they mourned and wept. But look at this. And when they, when they heard that he had... Well, let me back up. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen, had been seen by her, they did not believe. Right? Now, why did, they, why did they not believe? Anybody want to tell me? Anybody want to just raise your hand? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 12 is why. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. The two of them that is, this is referring to is the, the two men that walked on the road to Emmaus. And Jesus just appeared. And they didn't know it was Jesus. And they were talking to him and they invited him into his house. He went and he sat down and, and, and uh, he began to talk to him about all the things. You know, because Jesus was cool. Jesus just showed up and he says, so, what's going on? I'm paraphrasing. And they said, are you the only one that's been in this city and don't know the things that has happened? We were hoping for the Messiah. We were hoping that he was the one that was going to save us. They don't know. 
He is the one walking with them, and they don't realize because he doesn't look like the Jesus that died. Mary, who also uh, uh, showed himself when Jesus showed himself to her, she is supposing him being the gardener. Jesus transforms to anything he wants to transform. When he showed up to Peter, or to the 12, and Thomas doubted, what did he do? He reverted back to who he was and said, look, Thomas, look at the holes in my hand. Look at the, you put your hand in my side. Because, again, he can materialize in any form he wants. Well, guess what? We just read a little while ago that we will take on the same heavenly form that he does. So the Bible says uh, oh, when he comes back, we will be caught up together to meet him in the sky, and we will forever be with him, but we shall be like him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When this resurrection happened, God, number one, proved that it was real. There was witnesses to bear witness that Jesus is the one that died, but now he's the one that rose. And this time, he ra he's raised with power. This time, he's raised to do and, and transform who he looks like when he wants. Amen? Amen. And this time, when he raised, we're raised with him spiritually. Amen? Number three, I want to say, is that uh, when Jesus died, he was subjected to the authorities, right? And if you look at, if you come back to, let's go back to chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Uh, we're going to pick up in verses 22 through 28. Because this, we're showing, the scripture is showing the authority and the power that he now has. Uh, picking up in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As soon as I get there, amen, there we go. Uh, let's pick up in verse 22, and we'll read through 28. And it says this, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Jesus is the first. He's the one that was raised first. But afterwards, everybody who believes in him, guess what? You should be excited because this world has nothing to offer in the sense that it's going to bless the kingdom of God or us in an everlasting way. There will be no more tears. There will be no more pain. There will be no more disease. There will be no more earthquakes. When we are now going to be caught up like him and enter into the heavenly places, things are going to be transformed. Things are going to be made new. There's going to be blessings forevermore. Amen? There's going to be joy inexpressible. See, we experience some of that now, but that in, in the by and by, it's going to be a whole lot better. But let's keep reading. Um, then, verse 24, comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom to God, when Jesus delivers the kingdom to God, the Father, when he puts an end to the rule and all authority and power. See, though he died and he was subjected to the world's way of doing things and authorities, now the world is going to have to be subjected to his rule because he is now going to rule over heaven and earth. But look, let's go on. Listen to this. Watch this. He says, he must, verse 25, must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Verse 27, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. What he is saying is that, wait a minute, let's not get it twisted. God the Father is the rule. He is the head. Amen? Amen. He is the one that gave Jesus the authority to put all things except him. Amen? Amen? Jesus is not raised, the Son is not raised higher than the Father. We're going to see that in a minute. Amen. It says, uh, uh, verse uh, 27, it is evident that he who put all things under him is, is accepted. Verse 28, now when all things are made subject to him, 
then the Son Himself will also be subjected to Him. In other words, well, let me finish. Who puts all things under Him, that God may be all in all. What am I saying? I want you to know that God is in control of everything. Even what Jesus is doing. He says, look, I'm putting, I'm giving you, Jesus, authority over heaven, over earth. I'm giving you a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. He says, I'm going to give you that authority so that you can operate and do and run the kingdom the way it's supposed to be run under me. Amen? Amen. See, God gives, and, and, and we really need to take note that when Jesus is subjecting himself to the Father, look at how awesome that is. We have a hard time submitting to parents. We have a hard time submitting to uh, uh, our bosses, you know, in different areas and, and rules that's above us, the government, all these things, right? But look at what Jesus is doing. He's got the responsibility of heaven and earth. He says, but yet, I'm going to submit to my Father. So how much more should we submit to Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior, who only wants the best for you and me? Who only, he already demonstrated his love, for while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. God the Father already demonstrated how much his, he loves us. But uh, 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 for, for the, uh, how do you say, uh, God sent his only begotten son. He sacrificed the one and only for us, just for me. Amen? Amen. My brothers and sisters, this resurrection day, God has given Christ the position and the name that is above every name. And even now, during the shutting down of almost everything, this Resurrection Day should be a reminder of the hope that we have that drives us to keep our eyes on Him. I'm almost done, but I want to, I want to share this with you. If you turn with me to 1 Corinthians, uh, oh, we're right here, chapter 15, but look at verse 12 through 20. It says this, Now if Christ is preached that He has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Right? Mm -hmm. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your mm -hmm. faith is in vain. Mm -hmm. Or is it empty? Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified that, uh, of God that He, God, raised Jesus Christ from the dead, whom He did not raise if in fact the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. Verse 17, and if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then, verse 18, also those who have fallen asleep in Christ, they have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, if only in this life, not the resurrection, but if we just in, in believing in Jesus for what we have right now, he says right here, we are all the men the most pitiful. But verse 20 says it all. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits. Amen? Of resurrection. And what I want you to hear, my brothers and sisters, is that this is the hope that each one of us have that should be driving us to keep our eyes on Him. Amen? Amen? Secondly, I want to say joy. If you come back, we're just about done, but if you come back to uh, uh, Mary and uh, John, you'll see a couple things. One, it starts off with verse 11. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. I want you to get that. She stood outside by the tomb weeping. Amen? And it says, and she wept. A second time it says she wept. Stooping down and looking in the tomb. And the reason I want you to see this is because this is a deep emotion 
that Mary is having for Jesus. She is missing the Lord. She is wanting to know where is he. But then it goes to verse 13. Then they said to her, woman, this is the angels. Woman, why are you weeping? She says to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Listen, the Gospels are considered what they call the synoptic Gospels. Synoptic means similar. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all write similarly the account of the resurrection in their own uh, personality and as the Holy Spirit gave them. So all of them write about the, Holy, uh, about the resurrection, resurrection, but some give more emphasis than others on different areas. And what I thought was interesting is that John talks about Mary. All of them talks about, which I'm getting to, about who Jesus showed himself to, who the angels showed themselves to. All of them talk about joy and amazement and marvel. And what I'm saying is that this is where we are when we're thinking about the resurrection today. This is why we get excited when we just start to ponder what the Lord has done for each one of us in saving our souls. Is that I have joy inexpressible. When I think about what took place here and you put yourself in Mary's position, and I'm saying Mary and not Peter, not the disciples, because Jesus didn't show himself to Peter and the disciples till later. He didn't show himself the angels Peter and them never saw the angels. Mary did. Mary the mother of James and Mary Magdalene. And some other women, Salome and some other women that was with them. But they saw the angels. They saw Jesus. Even though they didn't recognize him, they saw them. And I, I, I often wonder, why did Jesus and the angels have this engagement with Mary and, and the women, but not with Peter and the disciples? And if you look at the scriptures, it talks about, one, the disciples didn't believe. Even after they, Mary had told them they saw the Lord. They didn't believe, the Bible says. We just read that a little while ago in Mark. They didn't believe. But here's the other thing that I thought, and this is where I'm going to leave it at right here. A transforming heart. Mary, the Bible talks about, she wept. Mary was weeping. The women was coming to be with Jesus. They wanted to be, even though he's dead, they wanted to be with him. Listen, in, in chapter 20 of, of, of uh, the Gospel according to John, this dialogue, she says, with uh, the, the, the gardener. Well, let's start in verse 14. She's talking to the angels, because they just said, woman, why are you weeping in verse 13? And she says, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she said, has said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And then he says, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And then look at her response. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have taken or laid him, and I will take him. Jesus is dead. Peter, don't, Peter and the disciples, they didn't even believe. But Mary is weeping. Mary is emotionally connected to the Lord. What am I saying? This is where we are to be. We should be emotionally connected to Jesus. We should be willing to take the Lord with us. Like Mary said, look, where is he? that I may take his body. I'm saying to you, we need to come to another level of intimacy with the Lord and be transformed and allow God to transform our hearts so that we too can experience this emotional connection that Jesus then shows up for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but Ooh. wouldn't you like Jesus to just show up? I often be thinking and meditating and asking the Lord, God, you know, I just want to have an experience like that where you will materialize. And trust me, let me tell you something. I 
don't know whether it's going to happen like this, but I'm looking for it. I'm, I'm seriously looking. When I even utter those words in my meditation, in my devotion with the Lord, Lord, if you could just show yourself to me that I can experience you a new way, a different way. I believe in you, and God knows my heart, and he knows your heart. And during this time that we've been away from the fellowship of the saints, I pray that each and every one of you are asking the Lord, Lord, transform my heart. So like Mary, I'm looking for you so I can take you with me wherever I go. Allow God to transform your hearts, increase your hunger for him, and be like Mary. Be willing to take Jesus by your love for him. Because on this resurrection day that belongs to Jesus, it also belongs to us. We're in it together. We're connected together. The body of Christ is one. There is but one faith, one baptism, and one spirit. And we are all connected to Jesus. So as he was raised, so are we. And now on this day, we give him praise. We thank him for all that he's done and all that he's doing. So I leave with you today. This resurrection day belongs to Jesus and us. Amen. To God be the glory.